Today, I'm going for our first run in the Adidas Adios 5. Twenty point one five miles, eight minutes, twelve seconds per mile, one hundred and fifty eight beats per minute. Going for my long run on Sunday, the day after the marathon trials in Atlanta, and taking the Adidas Adios Five with me for my run, which was a tempo run for at least part of it. It wasn't tempo for the entire twenty miles, but the workout for today was four times three mile intervals at about a threshold pace, where that point where I start going really anaerobic uh, for heart rate and three minutes of rest in between each three mile set. It was a really tough workout. The hills in Atlanta are no joke. I know everyone knows that already from watching the marathon's trials coverage and hearing about the course, but uh, it definitely was very tiring for me. And I don't think I was even on the worst of it. I was running for a lot of it along the belt line. But one, the first rep that I did was basically like three miles straight uphill. Not a giant uphill, but like just gradual, unrelenting uphill for three miles straight. So that was really tiring. But uh, a very great time for me to test out the Adidas Adios 5. Uh, before I get into my thoughts on it, I do want to go over some disclosures. This is a pair of shoes that was sent to me by Roadrunner Sports for the purpose of review. And they're going to be doing a giveaway, so stick around to the end of the video to hear details about that, how you can win this pair of shoes as well as this jacket and the tights I was wearing. In terms of the disclosures, I do also want to point out though that no one's paying me to make this video or to wear this shoe, uh, and no one's going to get a chance to preview any of my thoughts or footage before you guys get a chance to see this video on YouTube. Now with the disclosures out of the way, let's talk about the Adidas Adios 5. Now this is a shoe that I've been pretty excited about because they're going to be introducing Light Strike into it. Uh, and I think that Light Strike has been out already, although I haven't tried it yet personally, because it was out in the Boston 8, which isn't like a Boston 8 Plus, it's just another Boston 8, even though the previous or the original Boston 8 didn't have Light Strike. There's a new Boston 8 with Light Strike in it, which is super confusing, especially since the Boston 9 with Light Strike is also coming out in like three weeks from now. But anyway, Light Strike is the new foam that they're going to be switching a lot of their racing shoes to because it's lighter than Boost, and a lot of you guys have been complaining. And you're not necessarily wrong that while Boost may be life, it's not the greatest for performance running shoes. But this shoe still has a combination of Light Strike and Boost foam in it. Uh, the Boost foam is predominantly in the heel, although there is some in the forefoot as well that you can see. And the Light Strike is a lighter material, and I think it's a little bit springier of material. I don't really get a cushioned feel from it, uh, but I do get a lot of spring back feel 
from it. So that's been pretty interesting. There is also a uh, redesigned torsion plate for this one, which previously I had really only thought dealt with kind of like your foot wobbling around like in this direction, but uh, I'll talk about it a little bit more. I think there's a little bit more to it in this Adios 5, at least in the way they're implementing it. There is a little bit more of an aggressive outsole pattern uh, on the rubber as well that I'm seeing, still using that continental rubber, which we've seen in a lot of previous Adios shoes. And it's a little bit more aggressive, I would say, in terms of the, the way that the outsole rubber is laid out. Uh, maybe it's not actually more aggressive, but it just kind of looks a little bit more aggressive, a little bit more speed tuned, a nice refinement from the Adios 4. Uh, it's a 9.5 millimeter heel drop shoe. I think it's odd that they went with specifying that it's 9.5 millimeters. Um, I'm not even sure that they can, with uh, production tolerances, uh, say that there's necessarily a big difference between like a nine millimeter heel drop and a 10 millimeter heel drop, but that's a discussion for another day. 9.55 is the stated heel drop. Now, in terms of what it was like for me to run in this shoe, the upper was super comfortable. I did notice that like everything's kind of like offset and curved. So like the right and left shoes aren't just about like where your arch is. There's lots of differences happening. Uh, everything is offset just a little bit depending on the shoe. Like the, the back center of the heel cup isn't like centered in terms of like the shoe, but I'm guessing it's centered in terms of like your foot and where your Achilles is. Uh, whether that actually makes a difference or not, I'm not entirely positive, but I can say that the Adidas Adizero Adios 5 fits absolutely fantastically, just as the Adios 4 did. Uh, tons of lacing and lace loops, which is similar to the previous Adios that I've tried. Uh, the tongue is just a tiny bit padded, again, reminding me a little bit of like a soccer cleat uh, to an extent, although much, much less padding than that, but a similar type of feel. It's almost kind of like it's neoprene. The upper is extremely well ventilated. My feet were chilly for a lot of this particular run, which was started out in like the mid thirties and ended up in the probably mid forties by the time I was done, but very much a racing type of shoe. I ended up taking this thing uh, on a variety of different types of terrain. Uh, I started out the run uh, getting a little bit lost first, but like my first interval actually started out on some like uh, dirt road and there were lots of rocks, not huge rocks. So it wasn't like a trail, but there was like rocks along this dirt road and those definitely hurt. I got no protection from there. I very quickly found myself kind of dodging some of the bigger rock sections and looking for just softer dirt to run on. So that was definitely something that I felt. I wouldn't recommend this for like a, even a cross country course uh, because you're gonna feel everything. This is certainly a road racing shoe. The other thing that I found is because I was running on a lot of changes in elevation uh, in Atlanta, this shoe happens to be really beautiful running uphill. I just absolutely loved it. I could definitely feel the light strike uh, when I was running uphill, and maybe that's in combination with this torsion plate system. Now, the way that all these things kind of fit together and fit differently, say, to compared to previous versions of the Adios, like the Adios 4, is that even though the Adios 4 had boost and some other midsole foam material in it, uh, the Adios 4, I, de I definitely felt like a little bit more boostiness in the mid and forefoot. I'm not quite feeling so much of that in the Adios 5. I'm really only feeling the boost when I'm at slower paces or when I'm getting a little bit sloppy as I'm getting tired uh, and the heel is getting a little bit more involved. I think it's a nice amount of implementation of a softer material for the heel for a shoe of this type, which is intended to be a very fast day shoe or uh, your marathon or half marathon racer. So I think it's just right. I wouldn't really want to use this shoe because there's not as much in the mid and forefoot as my daily trainer or something that I run on a regular basis with. It could handle the miles. I don't think that my feet and knees could, uh, but that's kind of where I'm thinking that this is striking a really great balance of cushion, but responsiveness for the intended use case, which is for your fastest of days. The way that the all three things combined together, especially when I was running uphill, I definitely felt like as my foot was hitting the ground, I was getting a lot of snapback of the shoe, um, whether it's the torsion play in combination with the light strike, in combination with the boost, I'm not sure exactly what is getting activated when, but all three of those things uh, seem to be working really well together and made for a very lively push off as I was like charging kind of up the, not hill, but up the uh, slight but steady incline that I was experiencing on that particular day. 
ultimately, very much I think that this shoe carries on the spirit of the Adios line, where it's definitely, for me, I put it in the half marathon racing category. A lot of people that are in the elite or sub elite levels definitely will be able to run race their marathons in this shoe i just don't think that my feet are tough enough for it uh i for me around like mile 14 even though i wasn't running on uh road surfaces for the vast majority of this particular run i found there's an active oval i think it's what it's called loop that's about a half mile loop uh within piedmont park in atlanta where i did a lot uh the last two uh, of my three mile uh, reps on there, which is like a nice, very smooth, but soft dirt uh, road type of surface. Uh, not a lot of big rocks on that at all. So it was very easy on my feet. But even then, after about like mile 14, my right foot was starting to wish that I had a little bit more cushion in there. So my feet definitely aren't strong enough to carry this the marathon distance. But for the half marathon, I think this would be a lovely shoe to race in. But you have to think of it like kind of like a sports car so like a sports car isn't something that you're going to take to go get groceries you're not going to take it to like drop off the kids i mean maybe you are but that's not where it's great there's lots of other cars that are better at doing those kinds of like daily task activities than say like a porsche that doesn't have its traction control system turned on this is like driving on a track with a Porsche with the traction control off. Uh, it's going to really make you pay attention to what you're doing. You have to have some good technique to be really able to get the most out of the shoe. But if you can, you will be rewarded with an absolutely exhilarating ride. So this shoe is super fun to run in. I'm going to be doing a lot of fast training in the shoe, some of my longer tempo days and some of my, uh, not on the track, but on my road interval days. This is a shoe that I'll be very happily reaching for. And with that boost that's in the heel, if there's something where there's uh, an on off, where there's an interval and then a rest period, this is going to be really nice for those like recovery jogs, for your warm ups and your cool downs, uh, and even saving you a little bit once you start to get a a little bit sloppy, a little bit messy as you're trying to really push hard towards the ends of those reps. Uh, I think that this is a really well just balanced shoe at the very specific task that it does. So those are my thoughts so far on the Adidas Adios 5 with Light Strike. It doesn't say with Light Strike in the title, but I'm going to say with Light Strike in it. Uh, if you have any questions about it, feel free to put them down in the comments below. I'd love to talk to you guys about it more down there. Now let's talk about the giveaway. Roadrunner Sports wanted to hook you guys up uh, with something that uh, I thought was exciting. So I thought, you know what, I really want to get into Adios 5. And let's uh, pick out a jacket and a pair of tights that I think would go really well with it. And so this is the jacket that uh, you'll be able to win. I'll post details and links about it in case you just want to buy it too or just learn more about it. Uh, and the tights that I was wearing, which are the Recharge Compression Full Length Tights, which are the full length version, finally, of the half tights that I've been loving. I've raced um, most of my races over the past, basically since I found the shorts, those are the pants that I've been racing in and been doing all my hard workouts in. I absolutely love them. They have pockets on both sides so you can fit all your gels. You can even put a phone in there if you need to as well and run. That's how I ran the tunnel marathon. Uh, five gels and a phone. So you could fit a ton in those pockets. These are full length versions of that and the tights work out fantastically. That's what I wore on this run. They were absolutely perfect. You can win that as well, as well as a pair of the Adios 5. Uh, the only limitation, it has to be US residents only. And you've got to follow the Roadrunner Sports TV YouTube page. Uh, technically, if you wanna like any one of their videos or one of ours, that'd be great. You don't have to, to win. And put in a comment. Let's put Roadrunner Sports in the comment so that way I know that it's an entry, only one entry per person, please. Uh, and follow it up with, let's say, the best running tip you've ever received. Right or wrong answers permitted, but let's make sure we keep it clean. We got to follow the YouTube community guidelines and some Roadrunner Sports people might be looking at those comments too. So let's keep it very nice and civil, uh, but wrong answers will also be accepted as well. I'll keep the giveaway open for the next seven days. And then at that time, I'm going to close it. I'll update the title of this video and the description of this video to let you know if it's too late or not. Um, but if you, even after then, if you want to put in some wrong answers of the best running tips you've ever gotten, I could always use a good laugh. So I'd love to hear that as well. So good luck. I will contact you guys once I randomly pick one of the winners. Uh, before I go today, now I do want to remind you about the new Charity Runner of the Week. I didn't get to put it into yesterday's video, uh, but the new Charity Runner for this week is going to be John Henry, and he's running the London Marathon and raising money for the New York Roadrunners Team 
for kids. John has been raising money for the past several years. I think by my count, he's at over a total of $8,000 raised for charity over the variety of races that he's run and raised charity for. That's not even including the money that he's raised so far for this London Marathon buildup. So I was very happy to donate $70 to John's fundraising efforts. And I'll post a link in the description in case you'd like to learn more. That's all I have for today, everybody. Thanks so much for making it all the way to the end of the video and I'll see you guys tomorrow. Yo, what's going on?